So then, if I understand this right, that Final Destination was the first screenplay that you actually sold. Is um, that the first one? That was the first one I sold. I wrote one. Um, it never got made, but I was actually hired to write a sequel for a movie called Pumpkinhead, which is one of my favorites, and they're remaking it now. Um, so hopefully, I can use my I, sequel idea for the sequel for the remake. But um, I got hired actually. Before I had an agent, I got hired um, just Brad Cravoy was a producer um, and yeah, he was taking pitch meetings and, and I wrote a pitch that he liked and he basically hired me and another writer to write drafts of the script and then they ended up, the company got bought by somebody and all this. So neither one of our scripts ever got made. Um, but no, that was my first uh, paying job as a writer, which was fun. Um, that was a little crazy because you're like, wow, I'm writing something that I grew up loving. Um, so that was the first thing that I actually sold. And, and, I, and I'd written like five or six, seven scripts before, before Final Destination that never got, so, and rightly so for some of them when you go back and read them, it's like, whoa, these are pretty, pretty bad. But there's a couple of them that still have like nuggets of ideas that I might turn into something someday. Um, so then what, I'm just wondering how, how did it happen? What was the, what were the details? So you're working at New Line. They've oh, known um, you for years. They've known me for years. Mm -hmm. You know, I had the TV, I was trying to get a TV agent and then my friend Mark Kaufman was like, oh, this would make a great idea for a feature. Um, so I, back in the, back in the day, you could actually sell a treatment to a studio. You know, you didn't have to write a whole script. And because I worked at the studio, I knew how, um, the, when the winds would change very frequently like so you know something would be hot one week and not the next week so i was like well let me write a treatment because it's a great concept and then i'll some friends of mine worked for a producer outside of the studio that had to deal with the studio so i'm like let me work with them and their producer partner and then bring the idea back to the studio because i knew that would give me a better chance of getting it set up if it was with a producer attached so i you know i had the treatment but then and it was about they were all adults um and then Scream came out, and I love Scream, and Kevin Williams is a, a dear friend of mine, but the minute that came out, it's like, well, let's make them all teenagers. So then I had to go through and rewrite the treatment to make them teenagers. Um, and then the studio's like, they just couldn't get their head around death being the killer. They're like, this, it's a great, it's cool, but how can you make death a killer? You, that just doesn't make any sense. I'm like, that's the whole point. Like, it's it's death, you can't. So they, pa they the studio just kept passing on it, and finally the producers, it was uh, Warren Zide and uh, Craig Perry, um, they were like, well, if you don't, if you pass on it again, we're going to go to Dimension, which was kind of New Line's rival, Miramax at the time. Um, and so they're like, we'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you said the so, magic words. So, yeah. so then they bought the treatment, then they hired me to write the, this, the first draft of the script, and then we went out to directors after that. So um, it was a pretty quick process, I and mean, we sold the original story in 97, and the movie came out in 2000. So that's a, in Hollywood time, that's pretty, pretty fast. So when you did the casting for it, how did you find the lead? Uh, they actually New Line did all the all the casting through their casting department. I mean, I, I you know I'd put the, a list together of like my dream cast um, at the time, but you know I I love the cast that we ended up with, and it's funny because I'm friends with Devin, you know he he's directing now and he's got a new TV show on, and so I directed his or produced his first uh, short that he directed, and he's a really talented guy. So we've actually reconnected in the last few years, and he's just a he's just a great guy. But um, it is funny because when I was writing the movie, I was kind of you know trying to turn some of the tropes on their heads, and so there's you know, there's very few movies that have like a final guy in it. It's always a final girl. So I wanted to write a movie with like a final guy in it. Um, and his character, I think, is definitely stands out as, you know, he, you know, he's such a great actor too. He did a great job and he was Casper. So it's always, it's just very funny making fun of him because he was in Casper floating around with Christina Ricci and they were kids <laughs> dancing. It was ridiculous. Devin, if you're watching this, ridiculous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would see him in so many things, like because I used to go into Blockbuster all the time. Yeah. I just remember, you know, there he was again. And, yeah. You know, so yeah. yeah. But, no, but at a, that, that time, was he? Yeah, he was really, he was really, he was really hot then too. I think he'd, um, he'd, um, oh man, there's something north. I'm blanking on the name of it, but um, it was a group. Of, it was a, some coyotes and kids in the wilderness. I'm totally right. not going to move you up, but it was a, it was a, it was a really big movie. It was Casper, and then the, that one he did Idle Hands. I think Idle Hands might have been, mm -hmm. I don't know if that was pre or post Final Destination. I think it might have been post Final Destination. But yeah, he was definitely like on everybody's like, yeah. you know, ones to watch list. So, right. And we know. shot it in Canada, so we got a lot of Canadian talent oh, okay. uh, for the film as well.